Hi, I'm Tom. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about temperature sensors, uh, mainly around calibrating temperature sensors. So if you've followed my channel or you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I've been tinkering with a kind of radiator monitoring system. That involves probes uh, monitoring the flow and return on each of the 10 radiators in my house. Um, I've done a video on that, so I, I won't go into any more detail, but essentially I'm logging and recording the temperatures across uh, all of the radiators in my house. The long-term goal is to A, help me balance the system so that I've got uh, a nice uh, distribution of heat across the house, and more long-term is understanding uh, the behaviour of my house's heating. Um, as I plan sort of towards moving towards um, getting a heat pump installed. So at present, I've got my monitoring system up and running. So it's been sitting there now for, I, th I think, two, two or three weeks, maybe. And it's basically recording the, the temperatures across each of the rads and giving me uh, kind of an idea of the mean temperature. But one of the questions I've had uh, regarding the actual reading that it's giving is how accurate is that? Um, there's an adage that if you have two thermostats sitting side by side in exactly the same room, you, they will never give you the, the same reading. But I'm, I've always kind of been curious, especially as these are sensors that I've kind of put together myself. I've always been curious as to the accuracy um, of these numbers. So to help me kind of figure out whether or not these are accurate, um, I've picked up two professional uh, measurement clamps. They're from a company called Testo and they make a range of uh, all sorts of instrumentation uh, to do with the heating industry. I visited them at the installer show uh, earlier this year and kind of spied that they had a simple Bluetooth clamp. And when I kind of had a look at that, I could see that it, they're quite popular among professionals in the industry. Um, they use them for checking Delta T's across uh, all manner of things. So I splurged and I picked up two of them with the plan of using them to calibrate my own sensors. Uh, so I've got one of them here on my desk, um, which I'm going to open now. So uh, on this iPhone here, it's an old um, iPhone 11, I've got the, the Testo app, which I just installed, um, based on what I could see here. So I've just gone ahead and downloaded that already, but I've not set anything up. Um, but you can kind of see the picture on the box. It sort of shows you that you can have two clamps and it gives you the, the readings from those. So let's go ahead and open this now. We'll see what's inside. I'll just put the, the phone off to the side. Okay, put the box to the side. So. Yeah, so you can see there on the guide, they've, they've got a, a mountain of different uh, probes and sensors, probably do all sorts of things, but this is the guy here that I'm dealing with. Um, there's a, so there's a kind of a, t oh, so this is some sort of a certificate giving you a reference temperature. And then, yeah, you can see even this uh, can actually be out by up to uh, 1.3 degrees plus or minus. So that's uh, encouraging, I guess, to kind of know. Um, and this is the clamp. This is the clamp itself. So it's got a little guide here. So there's some bits and bobs, but essentially just, yeah, just looks like that clamps onto the pipe. And the instructions just say, pull the plastic tab and then, yeah, use the app. Now it's a, a smart probes app. I'm not actually sure if I've got the right, let's assume I've got the right app already installed. 
So it says first thing to do is pull the plastic tab, which is this. He says, oh, they don't make that easy, do they? Okay, there we go. That was a little bit embarrassing. So that's pulled out. Oh, and the app has actually just popped up. I don't know how clear that is, but it's detected the instrument, which is great. So I'll say, yes, please connect. There's a little green light flashing and look at that. It's connected. So it's got like a graph. It's got a little table. Okay. So that's one. So I'll unbox, I'll unbox the other one and I'll actually take them down and we'll connect them to, oh, maybe we'll just use the landing radiator just because it's right outside me there. And then we can check how accurate the sensors are here versus what the probes are telling me. So here I am at the hallway radiator. Um, you can see my little sensor, I'm holding it in my hand here, and that's connected to the, the two tails of the rad. The TRV isn't really doing anything. Um, so on my phone, uh, which I'll bring in to the screen, we can currently see that the, the temperature coming back from my sensors is 13.2 and 13.2. So they're both reporting the same temperature. Now, if I hop over to the app, one of the things that I found is it has these different measurement settings. So I've gone for a differential temperature and that's basically taken the two clamps and it's shown me now that they're both reporting roughly the same, 19.7 and 19.9. .9. So I'm gonna click the start which I think starts recording. And I can see it's currently got a temperature differential of 0 0.2. So I'll take the first probe. Oh, it's a little bit of foam in there. And I'll clamp that, remove my own sensor. Then there's actually a bit of paint on that. And I'll clamp that on this way. Okay, I guess that's what you do. And I'll make a bit of space on this side. And I'll clamp that one on there. And now we'll see what happens. I expect this will take a little bit of time for the sensors to um, adjust to the temperature, but I can already see that they're falling. We've got 18.8 .8 now and 19.0 and they will continue to fall. So we'll leave that go for a few minutes and then we'll check and hopefully it'll have fallen down to our sort of 13 range. Well, I had planned on waiting for the temperature sensor on the probes to drop down but it kind of occurs to me that that could take an awfully long time. So if we look at the graph of how the hallway sensor has behaved, we can see here that whatever that is two days ago at 20 past seven, it was 35 and I think the heating would have turned off, but it took like th that three hours <laughs> to, uh, to drop down to its value. So, I'm not going to wait uh, that long to test the probes out. So what I will do is I'll simply turn the heating on and then uh, we can watch it climb up and we can calibrate it or see how close it is to the top end temperature that it's reporting. So I'll hop over to Home Assistant. And actually the heating has, it appears, just come on so both the underfloor and the radiators are both on. So that's perfect. So I'll jump back out into the hallway now and we'll see what the, uh, the Testo clamps are reporting versus my own sensor. All right, so I'm back in the hallway now and as I can see on the app, 
uh, one of these is now heated up. So that's this one over here. So this must be the flow. So the, the, this clamp here is reporting 31.3. And I'll jump over to, and I've got, wait, let me just refresh this. And the landing, it's only reporting 27.3. So that is quite a difference. We do have a 13.5 on the other side. So it's definitely not registering any warm up there. Uh, and this is a cast iron rod. So this will take, this will take a bit of time um, before we start getting any heat coming out the other end. But I'll hop back over to the Testo. So yeah, the return hasn't really moved, which is the same, but the the actual flow temperature is, is much, much higher. 32.5, and we'll hop back. Now the reason I, I keep having to refresh this page is because the web socket thing, it's, an, it's, a, it's a problem with my little web page. It's not connected, it's not wired up properly. So I've got to keep tapping refresh. Uh, and that reconnects the, the kind of the live view. So it's definitely lagging behind. So that's only reporting 28.3. So that is a good, it's a good four degrees out, which is a lot more than I was expecting. So I'll leave it run now for, for maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, and we'll let this, it won't get up much further. The, uh, the flow temperature of the boiler at the moment is only 40. And as the system is not particularly balanced, we'll kind of get close to that, but I'm not sure how high that will actually go if we'll reach if we'll reach the 40. Um, I'll hop back over now. So that's still that's at 33. So we'll leave that run and we'll let this kind of get up to temperature and then I'll compare the two values. A few moments later. So the heating's been running for about 15 minutes now radiator is getting nice and warm and I can see from the test out clamps that it's reporting roughly 41 on the flow and this is nearly 30 on the return which is kind of what I would expect um, if we jump into home assistant I will scroll down through my heating uh, you can see at the very bottom of that that the heat meter that I have had installed is reporting a flow of 42 give or take and the return uh, temperature is nearly at 30. so they are kind of pretty closely aligned um kind of to what i would expect so they are very close to the ballpark but if i hop over to my monitor and i click the refresh button the Temperatures being reported by my sensor <clears throat> are quite far out. Um, you can see, sorry that this is hopping around. Um, it's the way that the text is wrapping. Um, and I kind of can't really do anything. But you can see uh, the landing is only reporting 34.5 at the flow and 25.5 at the return. So they're out by a good, I mean, we're talking six degrees um, on this end and three sort of four degrees at that end um, <clears throat> I mean this is nearly up now to 30 this looks like the the, the flow here looks like it's stabilizing but we're uh, yeah we're about sort of five degrees yeah six degrees out um, on the sensor which is a bit disappointing So back on my desk and yeah, there's clearly a big difference between uh, the values that I'm seeing here versus what's being reported by the, the kind of professional tools. And that's fine. I mean, I wasn't expecting my homemade sensor to be anywhere near um, as accurate um, as these, but it would have been nice to have it a, a bit closer. Kind of when you're reporting 40, when it's reporting 40 and I'm only reporting sort of 35, that's a good, uh, 
that's a good kind of 10% out. So that's not, not great. Why could that be? Well, I think one of the reasons in terms of that difference is that I haven't checked the value of the actual resistors that I'm using in the, the, the voltage divider. Um, I covered that in a bit more detail in, in a different video I've done in terms of how I've built, built those sensors. So I, I don't want to go into that. But essentially, uh, when you buy these NTCs, they give you a, a reference voltage and they give you a, a reference uh, resistance. And then you kind of use a voltage divider. And you do a bit of math and that will spit out based on uh, the resistance being provided by the sensor. You can convert that into a temperature. Now, I've been using the, the 10 kilo ohms, that's the reference, um, and in my calculations, I've just assumed that both sides of that bridge are 10, uh, both sides of the voltage divider are 10 kilo ohms, where I know for a fact that the resistors that I bought definitely aren't, uh, they were very cheap. And I think I measured one of them just out of curiosity uh, a few weeks back, and I think it was only 9.6, might be 9.8. So that 200 kilo ohm, sorry, 200 ohms, uh, whilst it may not seem quite like a, it doesn't seem like a large amount, but when we're talking about a temperature range of, I, I think those temperature sensors work over a range of well over 100 degrees, might even be closer to 200. I think they do something like negative 40, 260, uh, maybe a bit hotter. So that could be the difference between uh, you know, that could help explain some of the difference. There's also going to be noise in the analog to digital conversion uh, in the little uh, Nordic um, microcontroller units that could also explain some of this. So now that I've got an idea of how wrong they are, I'm definitely going to have to spend a bit of time uh, tweaking and refining that, uh, the, the configuration of those units. I'll probably uh, do something um, Michael Podesta suggested, and that was to just drip, simply drop the sensor into uh, something I know to be at zero, so like a jug of cold water. And at least if I can calibrate it to zero, I'll have a lot more confidence that um, it's it's correct or it's as you know it's it's within a, a certain tolerance. I kind of did this as an exercise just to kind of see. How close I was because I, I mean I did know that they weren't calibrated at all but I, I just wanted to get a feel for how close they were so now I know not close at all or at least not close enough that the data I've been logging for the past couple of weeks is sort of useful or accurate I mean I guess in one way uh, at least the the temperature differential the delta T will at least be a usable figure so that's good um, that's primarily what I want to use for the balancing anyway. So if both of my sensors are out by 10% or 15%, then at least I know that the temperature difference should be the same. And actually, that is something I should just check, um, which I'll do. I'll actually do that now that I think of it. All right, so I've put the probes back back on the radiator and the app, which I'll just do a, a quick screen record so you can see. So the app is reporting roughly seven degrees. Now the temperature is still, uh, it's still catching up, but we're looking at a delta T of about seven, which kind of mir mirrors what my heat pump has been uh, logging um, over the past couple of weeks since I've had it installed. And if I hop over to my app and I refresh this, uh, it's giving me, no, my delta T is not, that's showing me 33 and a half and nearly 40. So unfortunately, yeah, that delta T is, is um, it's out by 50%, wow. So the readings I'm getting um, on these are, yeah, 
even worse than I thought. Hooray! So I've definitely got my work cut out for me in terms of trying to improve the readings coming off this, but at least I know now what I'm dealing with so I can form a plan of action and start making some tweaks. And on that very disappointing note, um, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or, you know, please use the, uh, please use the comments. Um, if you'd like to know more about what I'm doing, uh, you know, please ask. I'm always happy to, to share. Uh, do check out the other videos. I'll put some links to those in the description. And I'll, it, that just talks about the, the kind of the project I'm doing with these sensors and, and what I'm trying to achieve um, by reading these. Um, in terms of my thoughts on the clamps, yeah, they're really easy to use. Um, they've obviously been calibrated because I know they're a professional tool, so they will have definitely been calibrated. So I can trust, you know, within that one degree or 1.3 degrees that these are a lot more accurate. And I'll definitely be using them uh, for different projects as I'm continuing to tinker with my heating. Um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please do like and subscribe. And that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.